Hello everyone. Today we will start about the physical methods, various physical methods. So in today's session, what we will try to do, we will try to understand that what are the varieties of physical methods are possible to uh, conduct uh, during our um, any kind of ergonomics workplace uh, in analysis and evaluation. And when we are talking about any product evaluation, any system evaluation, what are the varieties of physical methods available and how do we practice them. So in this uh, today's session, we will take a overview, talk, we will take an overview and then from the next class onward, we will discuss each tool in detail and we will take some example as well. Okay, so let us understand what is the physical method, what, what are the uh, no, varieties of things available in physical methods and why do we call it as physical methods. So, if you look at the uh, major definition of ergonomics, domains of ergonomics, we, we understand there are some component which talks about the physical domain of ergonomics and other part calls uh, talks about the cognitive domains of ergonomics. Now, whatever things are being covered in the area or domain of physical ergonomics and when we are trying to measure them, assess them through some techniques and tools, we will call it as the physical methods and we will be considering or we will try to uh, explain it or we will try to practice it in this particular set of uh, lectures. Okay? So, this uh, if we talk about physical uh, methods, we use them to assess the performance of work. Basically, we will try to understand the physical performance of particular work. So, how much crucial that to the work and it is used to obtain the essential surveillance data from the management of injury risk in that particular workforce. So, whenever we are talking about physical methods in ergonomics, it talks lot of thing related to physical injury, physical hazard, physical you know risk assessment and all those things. So, if we look at the uh, look at these all methods from a broader perspective we will we will uh, understand there are four basic major categories maybe these are these categories are for our understanding however we can have some more categorization or we can have you know subdivisions as well but for our major understanding, so for our broader understanding, we divide it into four major categories. First category which talks about the assessment of levels of musculoskeletal injury. So whenever we are talking about physical uh, methods in ergonomics, first thing comes in our mind that is the musculoskeletal disorder or really injuries or discomforts related to musculoskeletal system. So, whenever we are talking about the various assessment which gives an understanding, gives an um, you know uh, level discrimination uh, of the musculoskeletal injuries that comes first. The second part which is very very important and crucial when we are in the physical domain of ergonomics that is the posture and posture which is related to the work performance. Okay. So, posture it is not during the uh, laser time we are going to talk mainly about the posture which is connected to the work performance. So, when you are doing some work, when you are performing some work, so in an occupational setup, what are the kind of posture we are adapting and how do we assess them and what are the kind of impact may have due to such posture. Okay. So, this is second. Third is the assessment of work effort and fatigue. Now, when I am talking about physical method in ergonomics, so when somebody is physically active 
active in a particular workplace or workspace, it always that you know we need to understand what kind of fatigue is getting gen like you know how much fatigue the person is uh, getting after completion of the work okay so what is the kind of work effort he or she need to uh, put forward to complete the job and while doing so how fatigue how what is the kind of you know um, uh, uh, what I can say, what is the kind of level of fatigue is generated due to that kind of work exposure. Okay, so this is very very important portion and we have several methods, several understanding about it and we are going to discuss that same in that particular sector. And last that we are going to discuss in this particular sector is the what are the possible injuries available or what are the possible injuries can be you know can come up or uh, you know due, uh, due to the risky activities or risky jobs in that particular work environment or workplace. So, four major category. First, we will try to understand about the musculoskeletal health of the worker, musculoskeletal injuries. The second, we will be talking about the posture and the you know, connection between the posture and the work performance. Third, we will be talking about the work effort and fatigue. And fourth, we will be talking about the uh, you know, varieties of possible injuries in the work place. So, these are the major four sectors that we are going to discuss in the uh, area where we are talking about the physical methods in this particular course. Now, let us understand what are the varieties of uh, techniques or tools we are going to discuss in each sector. So, in today's class what we will do? We will try to get the overview what are the varieties of possible uh, techniques are available ok. Now from the next class onwards what we will do? We will pick up one one tool and one we will practice it. So, that way we will go into more detail because if you look at varieties of you know ergonomics research specifically which is connected to varieties of occupational health, occupational risk ok. So, physical methods are very very important and for the new researchers in the field of ergonomics in, in you know in the initial stage of their research is the physical risk assessment, physical different types of physical methods through which they try to understand what are the varieties of physical ergonomics concerns are there in that particular work area. So, physical domain understanding in, 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 in ergonomics is very very important. So, assessment of uh, the level of musculoskeletal injury under that mainly we will be talking about the musculoskeletal health and how do we assess them. So, many musculoskeletal injuries begin where, where it starts? It begins with the workers dis, you know, experiencing discomfort. So, if you go to the uh, initial stage of your data collection in any place uh, when you start with the physical method, it first comes that what are the you know, kind of pain, uh, discomfort, strains are there uh, or you know, faced by the person or faced by the worker in a particular situation. So, very first level of understanding is what are the kind of discomforts, uh, physical discomforts are available in that particular workplace which is faced by the worker. So, if these type of things are being ignored. So, if someone is having back pain, if someone is having neck pain, it is a very common discussion right. So, if those are being ignored that can lead to the risk factors responsible for those discomfort. So, you are not in a position. So, you are not actually understanding or listening to the 
uh, kind of discomfort they have. If you are not listening to the kind of discomfort they have, you will not be able to identify what are the causal factors or risk factors available in that particular workplace. So, understanding the level of discomfort at the initial stage of your evaluation is very very important. This will further lead to an increase in the severity of the symptoms. So, if someone is saying in a 10 point scale that you know, the discomfort is at level of 2 or 3 and someone is saying at the level of 7 or 8. And if you are not in a position to understand that and discriminate that and you if you do not take any action on that then you know the ultimate productivity or ultimate performance of that person will definitely go down and ultimately the, the whole system will suffer. So, through these physical methods, we get an understanding about the what is the kind of uh, severities are present in those symptoms or oh, level of symptoms. Okay. Then mild discomfort will gradually become more intense and will be experienced as a ache and pain. So, this is a common feature. So, maybe initial days it is not very difficult, you know, uh, you may uh, try to ignore it, you means the operator. The operator may try to ignore it. However, if we keep on uh, ignoring it in the latter stage, maybe for after few years or uh, few months, it can cause lot of pain and discomfort, severe discomfort. Okay. So, if uh, these are not being checked like not being uh, corrected then these aches and pain that signal uh, comes you uh, know uh, what it happen it will cause the cumulative trauma so small small ignorance will cause lot of problem and eventually may result in an actual musculoskeletal disorder or musculoskeletal injuries and serious nerve compression injuries you may know that tendinitis, tenosynovitis, carpal tunnel syndrome, these are the varieties of you know musculoskeletal disorders can happen if you are not in a position being on ergonomics to identify them in the initial stage of your evaluation. So, if we do not have any specific measurement tool or assessment tool to identify these musculoskeletal injuries, we are, uh, we will not be able to answer them in correct way. Okay, suppose there uh, people are, you can find lot of absenteeism in a particular workplace. You do not know what are the reasons for this absenteeism. The absenteeism may be something related to job, okay, something related to physical discomfort. Now, if you do not have a proper tool or proper method to identify that, you will not be able to answer it. So, so, so to do so, what will happen? You will be using these methods that we are going to discuss. So, what are the kind of you know, varieties of questionnaire, varieties of uh, you know, or tool or technique. So, with this you will be under, you will understand where the problem is lying and how it is possible for you being an ergonomics to answer it. Now, discomfort will also adversely affect the work performance either by decreasing the quantity of work through uh, you know in increased error rate or decreasing the quality of work through increased error rate or both either quantity wise or quality wise when you have an error or it may happen both quantity and quality wise you are doing some error and you know uh, there is a reduction in the whole performance. Okay. So, that is why it is very very essential for an ergonomist in the initial stage where a lot of physical activities are present in any occupational setup, you need to understand the what are the varieties of problem is lying, problems are lying and how do you measure them. So, to 
before you go for the measures you have to identify what are the levels and what is the what are the varieties of those problems okay so reducing the level of discomfort actually decreases the risk of uh, any injury occurring so if you uh, initially reduce that discomfort itself you are actually reducing the chances of or, or no chances of occurrence of those risk or uh, injuries so changes in level of discomfort can also be used to gauge the success of the design so if you have a new design so uh, for any ergonomic product or the implementation of an ergonomic product inter program intervention okay so these are the benefit where you you should use the uh, you know physical assessment tool and you can have a better workplace or better product design so if we talk about uh, musculoskeletal injury assessment and level of that uh, uh, you know musculoskeletal injury we majorly talk about pliable uh, NIOSH discomfort survey and Dutch musculoskeletal survey. These are the three very strong tool which we use uh, at the initial level uh, if we want to identify or we want to assess the musculoskeletal injuries. Now, these are not only the three tools, there are many other tools, I will name few of them. And also there are apart from that also there are many depending on the kind of um, kind of uh, objectives you have you have to identify which tool is necessary for you. Now through this particular uh, class you will understand the basic information about these tool okay now similar tool may also be available and which may be very much um, connected to your objective then you need to choose that particular tool not these tools okay it's absolutely depend that what is your objective and what are those tools talking about so uh, it's it is not possible that all available tool I will be discussing majorly used tool only I will be discussing here. So pliable uh, NIOSH discom US NIOSH discomfort survey and Dutch musculoskeletal uh, survey. So let us understand what these are and what it talks about. Of course I will take you in the next class with more detail. So what is pliable? It is one of the uh, no, very easy method, very very easy method and it is also uh, very old method, early method. Okay? So, comprised with uh, item checklist, you know, you know uh, there are varieties of items available uh, derived from the comprehensive review of the ergonomics literature. So, what they have done, they have uh, you know, uh, list of checklist, you know, list of uh, items in a particular checklist and all uh, all these variables which if, which are being discussed in this pliable all are derived from you know all musculoskeletal health related literature. So, uh, it allows workers to uh, systematically assess the workplace ergonomics hazards associated with five body regions that we are going to discuss and results can serve as a basis for discussion on improvements to the job design okay so the next major tool is NIOSH discomfort survey it's also very popular tool and uh, you know it has lot of uh, uh, testing related to reliability validity and it is you know it's not very context specific so that uh, that is why it is you know uh, very well accepted Okay, very well accepted tool. So, what it says that it allows to start, uh, know, easily assess, measure, assess measures of musculoskeletal discomfort in numerous body regions based on intensity, frequency, 
and duration of this compound. Three major component that is the in, in intensity of the pain or intensity of the discomfort, frequency of the discomfort and how long that discomfort is. So, under these three major category, it try to understand the uh, discomfort level of that particular uh, person in a particular environment. So, that is all about NEOSH discomfort survey. The third may, uh, important tool in this particular section is Dutch musculoskeletal survey. What it says? It says one of the most uh, comprehensive very much you know compact in nature and thoroughly validated survey measure. It is a mainly a survey tool. Okay. Short and long forms depend on the intent uh, of its use. So, you know it has very lengthy version as well. One lengthy version which is uh, almost about you know 16 pages whereas you have a small version which has less content. So, depending on how intensely you want to do the survey, how rigorously you want to do the survey, you can choose any one of them. Okay. So, either short form or long form and it comprises a collection of scales that deal with a broad range of workplace ergonomics hazard. So, analytical software is also available with this particular survey tool because you know the, the author who developed this particular survey or uh, this particular tool they have a software as well. So, if you want you can buy it and you can use it otherwise uh, in normal process you know in a hard copy format also you can analyze it by yourself. Apart from these three technique pliable uh, neo survey questionnaire and the Dutch musculoskeletal questionnaire. There are one more important tool in this particular sector is the Cornell musculoskeletal discomfort survey. It was uh, developed uh, by the Alan Hegre at Cornell University. Uh, that is why this name is you know, Cornell musculoskeletal uh, discomfort survey and these questionnaires are based on the on you know various published literature or uh, various published uh, research studies of musculoskeletal discomfort among the office worker. So, here the concern is only office worker. So, mostly people who are in sedentary work population. Okay. So, it is not very much applicable uh, when uh, when somebody working you know in a in a very um, uh, physical activity like you know uh, construction then maybe shop floor or maybe somewhere automobile industry where a lot of physical activities are there. For those cases maybe it is not useful however it never says it is not useful ok you need to validate it for your context but mainly it is developed for the office workers and the scoring of the questionnaire should be self evident to anal uh, to anyone familiar with this type of research so that also you can use one more uh, important uh, questionnaire very similar these two are actually it is first one is developed in 1987 and then it is modified in 1992. So, the standard Nordic uh, questionnaire which is uh, which was developed by Kornika in 1987 this also you can use it is also very simple method uh, similar to the kind of you know tool which is in the NEOSH musculoskeletal disorder questionnaire ok. So, here also you can have rating intensity level or frequency in different body parts and also you try to uh, you may get an understanding about the prevalence data in terms of point prevalence, weekly prevalence and uh, annual prevalence. The, uh, the, the same one like uh, standard Nordic musculoskeletal questionnaire or Nordic questionnaire was little bit modified and published again uh, you know in, in 1992 and it is termed as Nordic musculoskeletal questionnaire. Again it was it is actually an evaluated version of SNQ. 
okay so these questionnaires are very very popular and i think whoever is working in the field of uh, ergonomics especially physical ergonomics these are common to them okay so these are the initial set of tool to understand the status of musculoskeletal health in a particular workplace correct now let us go ahead with the next step that is the posture so whenever we are talking about musculoskeletal health or musculoskeletal discomfort it is very very uh, no associated incident with uh, uh, incidents of posture so if your posture is not correct or i would rather say is not neutral is awkward in nature you are uh, and you are continuing it for an uh, for an exposed hours there will be definitely a uh, uh, you know impact on your musculoskeletal health so if you understand there is an issue with the musculoskeletal health or musculoskeletal uh, you no know, injuries which we can understand from our previous set of questions or previous set of techniques definitely it will lead you to evaluate your posture of or working posture of that particular group of people or particular group of worker so let us understand how do we do that and what are the varieties of methods available so posture is an observable reflection of musculoskeletal activity of course the how you are holding your musculoskeletal system so if you are sitting that what is the kind of uh, no situations are available of your musculoskeletal system what is the conditions of various muscles while sitting in a particular workplace or even if you are standing or if you are you are lying on a bed okay what is the kind of condition are there for the whole musculoskeletal system so these methods uh, will allow the ergonomist uh, ergonomist to assess risk uh, you have to assess the risk by the systemic observation uh, alone so you have to do it systematically one by one maybe uh, initially neck then trunk then wrist and uh, then uh, not only the position also what kind of load it is carrying what kind of frequency it is occupying what is the kind of duration it is uh, holding okay all the systematic uh, observation or systematic evaluation so how do we do that mainly we at the very initial days we used to do on the spot observation however due to uh, technological advancement we can have videography or you can have a photograph and you can do the posture evaluation now you need to understand the neutral zone so every body segment moves through a range of motion right so suppose i am talking about my neck this neck also has some specific range of motion so i can move forward that is flexion then i can move backward that is extension side bending uh, on the right side left side i can rotate my leg that is on the left side again right side so every uh, in every angle we have some kind of natural movement not only for neck for uh, my uh, trunk for my elbow for my shoulder every joints we can have some kind of uh, range right through uh, where we can move those body parts even our fingers right so each joints can move okay so every body segments move through their range of motion that is very natural okay within this jo zone the anatomical stress and strain are you know insufficient to initiate an injury process so if they are they are in a particular zone you know you know in a natural zone then there will be no difficulties or no problem 
However, if it is extending or it is going beyond to that particular uh, natural zone, then definitely there will be some problem. And these posture evaluation tools will help you to understand those areas and what is the level of those problems are. So, excursion away from this natural zone, uh, if, if you are beyond that natural zone, if it is more than uh, it is more then the injuries are more if it is less injuries are less so what is the kind of level of destruction you need to identify through these uh, tools also frequently uh, the frequency of those postures so frequently repeated or sustained so here very important thing if an awkward posture you know you are holding it for longer hours then also it is problem also if you are occupying that repeatedly then also it is a problem so you have to understand what is the optimum duration of exposure so posture itself is a problem or itself is an uh, is an issue to discuss but when it is connected to your duration of exposure, it is again one more variable to identify and analyze. Okay. Also identify the corrective action before the worker is exposed into particular discomfort. So these are the things we will be doing in the posture assessment. So, uh, this is uh, a figure, you know, this is a figure of which is developed in the, you know, it is a digital human model in CATIA V software. What here it tried to uh, give you, uh, you know, try to explain these all green zones, okay. Green zones are comfortable zones. Okay, these green zones are comfortable zone, whereas these red zones are not comfortable zone or dangerous zone or risky zone. So, the total you know, uh, colored areas indicate the range of motion for flexion and extension of the shoulder joint only for the right hand for this shoulder joint. This is the kind of possible movement region. Okay, this is total possible whereas green zones as I mentioned earlier these green zones are neutral zone and red zones are the dangerous zone. Now here if someone is working in these green zones definitely they are safe. However, if that is being continued for you know recommended uh, hours then that may create a problem whereas if someone is working in these red zones that itself is a problem and if it is associated with more number of hours then it is a bigger problem. So frequently uh, repeated away from this green area uh, you no know, or sustained excursion excursion of right hand in any red areas for the extended period may cause the increase the risk of musculoskeletal injury and the uh, uh, no uh, musculoskeletal injury in that particular shoulder joint okay so this way we can understand it now under this particular sector that is the assessment of posture we will be talking about quick exposure checklist or we call it QEC, RULA, REBA, very very easy method and many of us already must have used it and the strain index. So what is, uh, what these tools talk about? Of course, we will take all these tools separately in uh, next class. For today's class, we will try to understand what these tools talks about. So, quick exposure checklist or QVC, it allows to quick assessment of exposure to risk for work related musculoskeletal disorder. 
it is used to analyze interaction between various workplace risk so from qec we actually try to understand the workplace risk first is what is the level of discomfort or level of uh, not discomfort sorry level of risk and then what are the associated workplace factors which is causing that risk that we get from qvc from rula uh, it's it's very very uh, posture targeting method and it helps us to analyze the sedentary work like you know seated posture so rula is essentially a tool which can evaluate a particular posture level or you no know, uh, intensity of that posture only at this sit sitting workstation so if you are sitting in a place you know table chair arrangement then only rula is applicable if whole body work is there like somebody is you know using whole body to do a particular job that case this particular tool is not applicable in that you have to go for reba the name itself says rapid entire body assessment so reba so reba is again very much posture targeting tool an ideal for the standing work standing work means whole body work so if you are not dynamic work but if you are standing and doing the job strain index is very comprehensive method and it focuses on the risk for developing the distal upper extremities musculoskeletal disorder specifically elbow forearm wrist and hand so these are these are the four uh, major uh, method that we will be uh, discussing apart from that we know we have ovaku working posture analysis system that is uh, we call it opas or oas and portable ergonomic observation method P peo okay so this uh, was that is the ovaki working posture analysis system it says direct observation and sampling you uh, know it talks about the direct ob observation and you know do the um, sampling from that and then using the whole body posture coding system to estimate the injury risk so this particular method actually developed in 1990 1977 these rula reba these are very new method it is in 1993 yes it is 1993 this is 2001 probably uh, need to check the year but it is uh, somewhere in 2000 whereas if you look at was it is 1977 okay it's a very old method still people practice it however if you look at the current uh, scenario you know most of the works uh, you know industry 4.0 or any other context if you look at the postures are more sedentary in nature so rula is uh, a dominant tool in current scenario now coming to the work effort and fatigue you understood all about the um, uh, musculoskeletal uh, injury or musculoskeletal health assessment and then posture now we are going to talk about work effort and fatigue so the performance of work in more deviated posture uh, invariably requires more muscular effort it's obvious if you have more deviation in posture you need more effort to be performed okay and if you have more effort to perform to hold those particular posture you are actually uh, going to get the fatigue okay it may accelerate the muscular fatigue of course right if you you need lot of effort to hold a particular posture those group of muscle will be fatigue after some time so two major method that we are going to discuss and which will help you to quantify the effort and fatigue are the borg's uh, rating of perceived exertion scale and the muscle fatigue assessment method or mfa so what borg's uh, rating of perceived exertion scale uh, 
So, it talks about the uh, physiologically validated method, it is all about the physiologically validated method. I will discuss it like you know it has RPE scale the rate of perceived exertion which is very much linear and which is connected to your heart rate whereas uh, CR10 scale which is not connected to direct not really directly connected to the heart rate. However, it has an um, elaborate understanding that how it is being used and how it can tell, uh, tell you about the um, uh, about the rate of exertion. Okay. It quantifies how much effort is involved in performing a particular physical task or physical job. Okay. Uh, muscle fatigue assessment, it characterizes the discomfort and identifies the ways that workers change their uh, behavior in an attempt to cope up uh, with the accumulated fatigue. So, if there is an accumulated fatigue, because of course, if you are continuing the work with uh, without proper recovery period, uh, there will be an accumulation in your fatigue level and you will be able to um, get the discomfort and you will be you know you, uh, that will reflect on your performance. So, this particular tool that is the MFA will help you to understand these areas. So, both these methods are invaluable uh, to the successful design of any physical job. So, when you are talking about you know uh, designing the uh, work rest cycle or designing the uh, timing of the work process all those things these tools are very very helpful so it will help you to understand the pace of work it will help you to understand the what is the kind of gap need to be there from one step to another step what what are all those areas where uh, which will help to recover any kind of fatigue from one job to another so all those things you can uh, you can understand using these tools neither the quantity nor quality of work performance will suffer over the course of a work shift if you use this tool to assess the situation and implement a proper intervention program so, the worker will not experience undue physical demand or fatigue that could increase the risk of any injury or accident. Now, coming to the last portion of physical assessment that is the injury risk in workplace. Whatever the possible identification and assess, assessing the possible injury risk in workplace. So, we will be talking about mainly these are related to you know a lot of physical activity. So, snooks table, lumbar motion method, okra and mapo. These four we will be discussing however, there are many more. It is like uh, it is a pool, it is a big pool. So, you can choose any one of them which is similar or uh, similar to these or which is more context specific to your area of research okay however we will be dis discussing these four because these are majorly used tool so such methods are used to predict the risk of uh, risk of potentially accurate injuries mainly with the related to back they are uh, they you uh, know set safe limits on work and predict how changes in a job will impact the level of safety. So, let us understand what is snook table. It mainly try to assess the back injury risk, okay. possible risk for back injury that it try to uh, give you an understanding. It set safe weight limits for men and women performing uh, you know, lifting, pushing, pulling all these varieties of tasks. So, it gives an understanding what should be the limit of a person if they are performing any pulling, lifting, lowering all those such type of jobs. Lumbar motion method 
by no name itself you can understand it talks about your trunk it talks about your lower back so it it's it's a very much instrumental method you need to have those instrument with you so it provides more direct measurement of the dynamic components of the low back disorders risk at work okay so it based on a uh, you know on a system which call is lumbar motion monitor will describe it so using that we will get and more uh, detailed understanding what are the major risks available or what are the kind of factors affecting your lower uh, lower back in a particular workplace okra a detailed analytical and reliable method it predicts uh, the upper extremity injury risk in exposed work population and it is used as the basis for identifying the opportunities for task and the workstation redesign evaluating the success of any intervention now here you can understand from sukh's nook table what you do it it only helps you to understand the pulling pushing lowering and all these types of job which is related to some weight lifting lumbar motion method it helps you to understand only the lower back risk associated with lower back okra help you help you to understand only the upper extremity mainly the distal upper extremity whereas mapo it is mainly concentrating with the healthcare workplace okay in hospital situation mainly okay so actually it is developed in that particular setup it assess the greatest risk for developing a lower back injury it talks about lower back but mainly from the healthcare sector for workers involved in care and handling the disabled patient and paralyzed patient now people may ask that why not lmm why mapo now question is lmm never talks about the human interaction between one person the handler and the handling element whereas mapo talks about the healthcare worker the kind of uh, human factors are present you know uh, while handling patient so there is difference so it's not only handling some weight it is not only handling some material it is handling human okay that's why it is very very different than any other uh, tool it also uh, incorporate the assessment of the work environment so mapo is very very specific to the healthcare uh, facilities so these are the uh, major uh, tools that we are going to discuss however i will name many more uh, whereas you have to take them up by yourself you have to study them up by yourself to understand uh, what are the details and if required if required definitely you can come back to us in discussion session you can write back to us in uh, you know whatever the email ids and uh, discussion forums are and we can definitely give you the solution because in this particular course it is really not possible to cover each and every tool available in literature whatever majorly used tool that we are going to discuss and in the next class onwards what i will do i will take one one Mm, tool separately and i will explain them uh, regarding their process regarding the their implementation and the how the data looks like and what are the possible way to in, uh, you know interpret them and how to start the intervention based on those interpretation okay so thank you for today next class we'll start uh, for the each tool thank you mm -hmm.